Hi, it's Chris, and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? So I was contacted by Mr. Sam C. in Kentucky. And he wrote me an email asking for some assistance with a rare sound card. Uh, you fixed my buddy's David Amiga, and I'm curious if you would like to sound the, uh, take a crack at this sound card, a PC9801-86. And he says, uh, Dear Dr. Chris, thank you again for looking at this for me. It is a soundboard for PC-9801 Japan computer. One day, sound was really quiet with barely nothing at all. I did open this. It was packed in just a small, regular plastic bag. Stash a, stash a body in there. And I didn't open this part yet. So it was packaged, double foam, and this is the card. And the capacitors were removed. And what happened was some of them were removed, I guess, Adrian style. Twister! And ripped the traces out. Positive here, negative here, positive here, another one there, another one there, another one there. So we got about oh, another one there. Several of these have been destroyed. And I have to remove, rewire, and clean up. So... I had to order capacitors for this because there's some goof values in it. And I have them. They finally came in after a little bit over a week. You can see some similar EMI filter caps like the Amiga uses. On the back, it's got a joystick port, DC in, microphone line out, line in, volume control, and a little headphone jack. Kind of neat. I know this isn't something normally I do, but I figured I could try to help. I have no way of testing this. There's also little to no documentation on this card, so that's going to make things even more fun. Some of these have been, they've been twisted off or just ripped out, I don't know. I'm going to start with just this little corner here with some flux and just see if I can melt this original stuff carefully because I don't know how it was taken out. So there are a little bit of traces left on some areas. There are so many pads here, and they are just, I mean, there's got to be 30, 40 capacitors on here. Oh, man, I just ran over some dog hair or something. It stinks. One second. Oh, God. Ogre Camping Fan. Oh, yeah. This thing's a lifesaver. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out. I still haven't charged it. <laughs> I still haven't charged it. I've been using the crap out of it. These pads that are just pretty much destroyed more broken traces so again I've said this a hundred times if you think you have the skills to do something because you've seen it on YouTube and it looks pretty simple and you've never done it before doesn't mean don't do it don't do it on rare parts practice on PC junk like there's a billion cards for PC or any busted electronic or piece of crap old electronic around your house, take it apart. Solder stuff, desolder stuff, learn how hot things get. Practice. It doesn't matter if you break something that's broken. You're just learning. You can practice taking chips out of the bottom and dip components or through hole or, you know, surface mounts. You can practice on something that's not important. That way when you do get the hankering to do work and do capacitor jobs or try a capacitor job from either watching a YouTube video, hopefully not Adrian because he's a cap twisting person that still justifies his means and his army will defend him to the end. You can see the bits I'm pulling out here. It's a lot of uh, little things. And uh, boy, this thing feels like a daggone torch compared to the little one I'm used to. Almost 10 p.m. at night when I'm just getting started on this. Thanks to my busy work schedule and the level of number of repairs I've taken in lately, six pending repairs. So I just finished three and they'll be out soon. After this one, five more to go. Some of them all the way from Australia. Now I'm gonna flux wash this board. WD-40 Specialist Contact Cleaner. I just put my trash can full of Raspberry Pi stuff and every junk underneath. And I just hose her off. I did get a capacitor mat for this thing. 
This is that sound card. It's like a four hundred dollar sound card, by the way. And there's that's the unit. You can see it just has a few capacitors. Some of it was in Japanese, but it's all four point sevens. All of them four point sevens, except C six. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna judge it based on the others around it. Sixty capacitors. There's sixty. Damn! Six zero capacitors on this thing. Sixty. Good God. Here, these are all the four point sevens. But I did an inventory. I have everything except the thirty three UF, and I just double checked, and my order isn't even processed yet. I can't see all my stuff. But anyway, it's a lot of the crap that I order. But you know, you see parts and shit for computer crap everywhere but yeah the rest of them haven't showed up I did get uh, 50 of the 4.7s so as soon as they come in I can finish those but I'm gonna do what I can now except it's 10 o'clock at night I have one two three four five six seven eight done and because of the twisting and the micro traces these things have I know this is extremely boring and I can't find where I was working at Underneath her dress is some slime from Flux, but there's two wires. Two 0.34 gauge Remington solder through wire, which is as thin as a hair. There's a trace that runs under the capacitor leg pad that's no longer there. Plus, it grounds only to one side and has a pass through to something, so I had to run a wire to the trace, scratch it off because it's so frail, I guess from capacitor leakage, the little lines are just disintegrating. So I have to attach a Remington wire to that, to a bottom of a ground plane, put a cap on top of it, touch it, and then put the adjacent cap on and another ground wire between the two. What fun! And I just continuity checked it, and it works. So I'm kind of like, because I don't have a schematic, I have to beep beep test stuff to make sure they're getting contact after I repair a pad. Plus I'm still waiting on some capacitors to come in and, uh, Oh my god. You dumbass. Small update. I know this is extremely boring, so I'm not filming everything. All the red slots are the ones that I've gotten done so far. I'm primarily focusing on the damaged pads where I've had to rewire things. Like, you're going to see wire in some of these. Some of them are looking crooked. Like, like that one right there. Because I had to bond it to the sides. And some of them, they don't look like straight because a lot of the legs were broken off and I've had to like scour them out. There's a wire right there going to the nearest point. That one's crooked because, you know, I had to reverse it to get the pad to its nearest, nearest neighbor. And that's where I'm at. I mean, I'm getting ready to focus on some more damaged pads up here. And, uh... I'm trying to knock out all the ones with the busted twist-offs to make my life a little easier when I put the ones back on. And it's just tedious and boring, and I don't want to film me sitting here for three or four or five or seven or ten hours boring you more than life itself. I've probably gotten 25 done. And like I said, I'm still waiting on my 33s to come in, so I'm knocking out all the tiny ones so I can just do the big ones last. The majority of the caps are 25 volt, uh, 4.7, with some 1647s. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of capacitors. Luckily, they're the tiny ones, but the caps I have are modern 2025s. But the pads are like right to the edge of the. It makes it so hard. Thank you, Web Precision Line, for this thing. This has saved my bacon, the 982.3, webtools.com, check it out. I, I, I promote this in every video, it's not because I'm trying to sell it, it's because I use it and this thing kicks butt. I got the C115 tips for mine, they're the little sabots that go in there, micro fine, all the way to a hair, really helps get in there, precision line isn't kidding. They have a 210 tip also that you're going to see uh, others have. I sent one of these to Mr. Thomas Andrews, amigo of Rochester, because I was ranting, ranting and raving about it, and he was going to buy a solder station. I'm like, 
hey, I have one of these, you want to check it out, I sent him the 210 tips, because he does a lot of Mac-based repair, a lot of these things, and they really come in handy. So if you're interested, link's in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. I get a nickel if you click on it. So click on it 8 million times for me. And anyway, but if you wanted to go on webtools.com, you can use a code they gave me called CER10, and that'll save you 10%. There's my phone. Look at that. That is probably 50 capacitors. I only got the 33s that I'm waiting for. It's about 10 or 11 left. They're all larger dudes. Now, I have no way of testing this. I was only asked to do a capacitor and a repair on the busted stuff. So far, so good. I mean, some of them are going to look a little weird. But, and I know it's not an Amiga part. But I just I try to help everybody out that I can. I did find a photo of this card. Blurry photos of capacitors. But I can clearly see 1647. It's taken me two days so far to do this, and I'm about four hours in to this this morning. The majority of it was scratching this thick board to get to the traces if they had good points, or I had to wire to the next alternative dot. These ground negatives, should I say, the negatives of the capacitors, are not part of the ground plane of the board. They run underneath to some other ceramic or other dude, so I have to be very careful and probe each busted line out to its point. This cap right here, the negative of it, runs to a dot right here. So when you're trying to connect to the ground plane, no, it doesn't connect to the ground plane. It connects to this little point. But it's not this one. It's not this one. They're all unique. So you have to be very careful when you're running micro wire and when I say run micro wire this is the wire I'm running can you see it there you go you can see it on that cap look how thin it is it is so thin 34 gauge Remington and 79c will take the, sh the thing off and it'll go up to 155 but there was another one back here on this chip thing that I think ran to a leg but I wasn't, there was nothing on the right side of the capacitor. I think it was eight off or twisted off. So I don't know because the back side here goes to a pin. The front side, I think, went to a pin. Hard to tell. Once again, no schematics. Running off the old eyeballs and hoping a prayer. Oh, check this out. Due to the wet precision tools line. Eh, there we go. I was able to drag solder into the bridge scratched thing but there's a ground plane big nasty and there's a little tiny wire that runs along the edge right here over to that point right there and that's why I scratched that wire I mean this is almost microscope level crap but I'm getting it thanks to that thing yeah hey I finally found a high resolution photo of this damn card and looking here at this dude, this pin is connected, and I'm glad I didn't connect it because it is just a ground plane that went on that wire. Hello, and welcome back to a week later. I had to custom order some capacitors in for Mr. Addison in Cleveland, Ohio. There you go. 50 whatever the hell caps. 1633s were the weird ones. We got some that are cockeyed, some that are on angles. Nothing done to the bottom of the board because it didn't need anything. There's nothing down there except TTL and transistors some of the caps are removed some of the caps are angled like this one especially because i had no pad so i had to kind of make a pad where it would be some micro wire here and there to fix the pads and there you go so by the time this video comes out mr sam will have his sound card back in action i'm going to clean some of the flux off carefully i don't want to disturb too much and we'll get this back to him immediately so Hopefully this will work well for him. I have no NEC computer to test it with. I thought it was for the X6-8000, but I was wrong, and that's it. So I hope this short video finds you well. I don't know if I even count that as an Amiga repair because it's not an Amiga or device saved, but I'm here to help if I can. Thanks for watching, and as always, hope you learned something.
Yo, it's Big Snoop, D-O-double. Yeah, so people ask me, do I really know Dr. Chris? To which I say, hells yeah, I know him. So how about tossing Simpson in the Patreon? It's only one dollar a month. Keep on saving them amigas. Uh. What do you know from funny, you bastard?